Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science or Technology. In today's show, Computer Wednesday, we're gonna talk about QR codes or quick response codes. So let's dive right into it. Well, before we understand quick response code, we have to understand its predecessor, which is barcode. Now it's an old and tested system, and there is a very good chance you have already seen it in action or in use because again, grocery stores to uh, like you know medical stores and everywhere, like it's a commonly used thing. So it's something that is uh, what we call a data storage. So it's exactly like a CD, DVD, floppy or you know final record now be mindful when i am saying a data store recorder it's meant for computer so basically think of it this way when you have a cd you can't listen to the audio in the cd you have to put it in a player same goes here the data is here it's just that to understand the data you have to send it through a machine so it's called machine readable form so Fundamentally, it's not meant to be read by a human. It, like again, you can read it technically on down below, but you're not supposed to do that. And uh, it's awesome. It works. Now the core principle was directly inspired from Morse code. Now Morse code was designed to work on a very limited bandwidth where you can only send uh, basically dot or dashes. Somehow humans managed to use that to communicate. So that was the inspiration. Like how can you have like, you know, just lines, basically black lines and white lines, basically white paper and black lines. How the heck are you gonna communicate a numerical value on that? Because you have to understand this puppy is 1950s kind of technology. That time you did not have what we call OR, uh, optical character recognition. So you could not just like, oh, scan the damn thing that was not there yet so how the heck you make sure a computer can understand so Morse code was like a computer can't understand with this white black white black at least computer could understand that so fundamentally this was built now everything is awesome about this it does work however it holds a very small of uh, amount of data so think of it this way how your mobile number is basically a string of digits so you can have like a nine digit mobile number fundamentally that means there is a maximum amount of uh, mobile numbers that can be created at any point in time you could have a country suffix in top of it so that will allow some more combination but you get the point so because of that it uh, like you know the small capacity there are many standards of uh, what we call barcodes that makes it complicated convoluted and there is an association who's responsible for making sure throughout the planet if they are using the standard they are complying to the regulation and they can uh, work against each other so for example you can literally take a part uh, that is manufactured by let's say tier one manufacturer and you can use it uh, like a scanner in let's say a uh, big bazaar mall it will work it can use a you know any other like you know walmart it will still work that because there is a central association taking care of that so fundamentally it requires a lot of uh, infrastructure and it requires custom equipment now that is the biggest problem because of the custom equipment aspect that smaller scanner that is not fundamentally too complex but is ludicrously expensive it's like seriously like your smartphone will look cheap compared to these things they are very expensive the only reason any smart uh, very store can even afford it because they buy bulk so there are uh, barcode gas at this far but we have to you know move past it now what's the logic behind it? Why the heck you want to go through like it works? It's a time tested system. So why the heck you want to break something like that? Because of the expensive equipment. That's the one fundamental thing that uh, we do not think about it because we see modern uh, barcode scanning equipment. But you have to understand if you wanted a barcode scanner in 1990s, that was a serious expense. It's like, whoa, like this is a, like, you know, modern store that has barcode scanner. We're like, whoa, expensive equipment. So fundamentally, we want to remove that. Another aspect, low data capacity inherently means you can't put too much into that. For example, your, you can let's say you have only 10 slots let's say only 10 places you can store data but what you are storing in them that allows how many combinations you can have for example uh, you can easily have uh, let's say you know basically 0 to 9 10 digits and you can get that combination that's not much but look at youtube what does youtube do youtube puts character there but then it's like hey character we are storing character how about we store whether character is capital like basically uppercase or lowercase so that fundamentally takes that uh, 25 characters that makes it into what we call 50 character set so 50 plus a uh, numerical value you are talking about 60 so each slot can hold 60 data points multiply 60 by basically how many units you have so you're getting that like uh, 10 to the power it becomes 10 to the power uh, let's say 60 combination so it's huge so even though while your total size would be small you could have enormous combination at that point you will reach a point where it's like eh, it doesn't matter you don't need a central repository because everybody could create a uniquely randomly generated system and it will never collide with each other so low data capacity was something that had to be solved and barcode while it does work while it is a time tested system it's fragile as hell uh, simply because it was designed with like you know lower grade computer equipment so if you're familiar with computer of 90s computer did not used to work for you you had to work for the computer there were people 
computer operators because again computers were dumb they did not have enough processing power there where they could understand oh you are trying to do this no, no. you had to be like you know absolutely precise for their sake so fundamentally it made uh, barcodes very fragile so minor damage to barcode done it's not gonna work and proprietary aspect i specified earlier that there is an association you have to understand there is like a lot of sub association in there lot of code uh, codes combination uh, algorithms like it's a, like a whole mess so we change all that with one core in innovation innovation of camera you have to understand in 1950 you would have to tell i'm gonna have two megapixel camera uh, digital camera they were like what the heck you are smoking so fundamentally that thing has changed because camera is a mass production equipment it's fundamentally free compared to a laser scanner it's super cheap so you are utilizing camera and nowadays because camera is getting uh, you know quality upgrades like almost every few months so you are in a point where a complex barcode camera is like i got this you can literally experience this like if you tried this in 2010s trying to scan a barcode with your mobile phone you have to be like absolutely stable and every perfect lighting and all that otherwise you would not right now modern mobile phones is like whoosh, done so camera utilizing camera solves all the issues like that was the fundamental uh, mindset change that was happened in 1994. so what is the system behind it now you have to understand it it has all the data that it needs now when qr codes were built they were built with a certain mindset certain experience they are like dude not everybody needs the same amount of capacity but sometimes you need large amount of capacity so for fundamentally speaking let's say you built a system that is like it can hold uh, three kilobytes of data yes if you don't need three kilobytes of data you will be stuck with excess wastage you don't want to do that so fundamentally they created a system where it's like barcode algorithm the algorithm that is running on your mobile phone running on a scanner will figure out how big the data string is it's almost like how your cd or dvd player can know hey i'm running a cd i'm running a dvd so something similar to that was done so that's why different sizes are possible now you might be like why don't we just go with the bonker size possible like highest data capacity higher the data capacity you go the smaller the pixel becomes basically the on off site those smaller they become the more vulnerable they become basically scanning them becomes much more difficult so fundamentally you want as big pixels as possible so somebody came up with the idea hey why not we create an algorithm where we have multiple capacities like hey you only need to share your mobile number wi-fi passwords so basic small data points use a small one you want little more oomph to that like you know some web address with some lot of uh, social media like you want to share your uh, facebook you want to share your instagram you want to share your youtube all of them in one go go with bit bigger and if you are a bit bonkers and you want to store a whole snake game you can go with this so yeah i have provided a video down below a person was a bit too crazy but he pulled it off so fundamentally that's the whole idea and how the heck a scanner will know because the data like what are you reading is directly encoded into this uh, you know data bandwidth itself that's why you will see the three squares they are always of the same proportion it does not matter whether you're reading the small one big one or very big one data wise they are all in the same position this are this is the anchoring point computer scans this point is like okay i got this this is how big the data bandwidth is so if it's let's say it's reading a big one and it added up the total uh, rows and column and it's like dude i'm not getting that it knows that it does what we call error checking it's like bro it's supposed to get uh, let's say 128 lines we are only getting 120 that means we are missing the eight ones so this is way uh, how qr code can self-analyze figure out like most of the data that is needed to solve a qr code is in the qr code as long as you have the repository basically dictionary so to say you can read any qr code of any complexity uh, with error correction also so that's the whole point error correction was a critical thing that was uh, understood very early on specifically in the big ones uh, you need to have this otherwise like fundamentally minor scratches or the fact the camera will never read it absolutely well big pixels camera is like i got this bro smaller ones like specifically a really bad example is uh, india's Aadhaar card they have like weird qr code that good luck trying to scan it like good luck if you put that on a scan uh, flat scan bed and try to scan it then also it will have hard time it's like way too complicated so fundamentally to solve those sort of issue uh, uh, error correction was built into the system itself and it has very large amount of data so if you go to qr uh, basically barcode they only have 10 digits fundamentally that's it 10 digits that's why it's not gonna have other combinations possible it was built for simpler times so that was like okay for back then then you can have longer uh, barcode or things of that nature but you get the point it's fundamentally not enough capacity it's barely like a mobile number this on the other hand it can go up to three kilobytes so that's a lot of capacity now we're like hey three kilobytes is not enough well, it's not supposed to send your store your movie files or things of that nature it's just enough to link you to something or transmit small amount of data to your mobile phone like wi-fi id and password so if you look in that way that is it can store any string of text 
it can store a lot and that's why i provided the video download that person fundamentally managed to store a whole game with exe using a qr code so it has a lot of capacity compared to a barcode it's like a gg it's like a going from cd to blu-ray it's not even dvd cd to blu-ray that's the whole point so that's what uh, is the core system of qr code so it is very complex so they built the algorithm directly into the qr code so qr code is like read me okay this is what uh, you're supposed to get out of me now what can we expect in the future now qr code was not uh, you know grabbing on very quickly but it was surviving long enough that it beat nfc uh, for payments and all that jazz simply because uh, when you are scanning it like you are fundamentally engaging into something nobody can like you know force a mobile phone that is in your pocket to randomly scan something else that's not gonna happen with nfc uh, credit cards debit card or mobile phones that could have been done and people did that and that's why like nfc has such a bad reputation for security and all that so fundamentally it became a better method of payment and india china even usa uh, it's exploding like using qr codes for uh, payment transfer it's going bonkers at this point in time and because uh, of uh, how payment portals are designed uh, they have a very simple algorithms like dude uh, you have to input a pin so if you have a mobile phone so first you will have a fingerprint face id or something like that that is your first line of defense second line of defense to open the payment app there will be a pin code then while you are scanning something and you want to do a payment it's like it will ask you are you absolutely sure so there is three layers of security there so it's very likely that one you may mess up two you may mess up the likelihood of all three messing up yeah that's not happening so it became a very time tested and like everybody is going bonkers on it uh, way of transferring money so that's awesome aspect of it and inherently still running on two dimension basically it has a black or white or basically it just detects contrast and contrast is detecting it in binary mode it's like either the contrast is high or low it's not doing anything else so somebody some people uh, from some universities came together and they are like what if we added color as a data point there are many fancy looking color codes uh, qr code but those are just uh, looks and at that point in time you will look at that and you look at the algorithm that's reading it it's just like contrast high contrast low contrast high contrast low it's not doing anything it's just like okay instead of using black ink you could use green ink or something like that it's not doing anything however uh, this time people are like hey we want to store large amount of data on a qr code but there is a fundamental limit the more uh, data you want to store it it's not that it cannot store it it can store it it's just like pixel sight will become small like for a camera it will become harder and harder to scan it properly so instead of going like whoop it's like okay perfect like we will back to square one so fundamentally nobody wants to do that so how do you allow large pixel sight to store large amount of data you have layers into that so rgb is a layer that is already built into every camera equipment red green and blue channels so what if you use different basically you have a red color system then you have a green color system and you have blue color system and all three are overlaid on top of each other and basically your scanner scans it on a software it's like it gets the color data and it splits it it's like okay red channel means then green channel means then and blue channel means that fundamentally gives you three independent data channels so your uh, qr code directly got three x capacity and you did not need to buy any new equipment all cameras are color cameras nowadays so fundamentally it's awesome now again i do not expect to see this directly like you know next year or uh, you know in few months of time but people are working on it and there are similar concept of this like where they have gradation so instead of uh, going with color they have layers of black so this same thing can be achieved if they are like okay black complete black gray and white so that gives you uh, one extra data point or sometimes like you know you can have like five or six because you if the more layers of uh, gradation you add the more lighting dependent you become it's like you know if lighting is not good enough you may end up a scenario where you're not reading it correctly that's why color they wanted to because even in low light red will look like a red green will look like green and blue will look like blue so there is a lot of potential there right now and a lot of people are pouring a lot of money into making uh, basically capacity increase in qr code so it's not going away anytime soon and and i'm reasonably sure we might not see nfc for a while but this will survive much longer so this was my presentation on QR codes. I hope you liked it, learn from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends, that will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free, and as always, thanks for watching.